Hi everyone, so today we're going to be doing um, some DIY taggy blankets um, slash crinkle sheets, whatever you want to call them. Um, so these are the first two that I've made so far and I just thought that I would put up a video and show you all how I did it. So um, the this is the first one that I've done and I've actually washed this one two times just to see how it holds up and stuff. Um, if anyone was wondering when I do post a video about something or a blog post or a product review, I really do try my best um, to make sure that what I'm sharing is a tried and true method. Anyway, this is the first one that I that I made that has been washed. Um, it's a Sesame Street flannel on the front and the um, bubble plush minky on the back. And then the second one that I made is over here. Um, and I haven't washed this one yet because I'm going to be building up my stock for my next craft show that's coming up. So this one, I had this really cute um, woodland themed flannel. Um, and then the back of this also has the same blue. So um, the first two that I've done have been very boyish, so I'm going to um, be making a more girly one in this video for you guys. So um, I already have um, some of this prepped. So the first thing that you're going to do is choose what's going to be the front of, oh, I have my finger in this, sorry, um, the front of your taggy blanket. So I've been using flannel so far. I'm sure you could use another type of material if you wanted to. So anyway, I have this flannel that has lots of colorful cats on it, which I thought was really cute. Um, and I've already got the ribbon trimmed on. Um, <gasps> Oh, sorry. So you need to cut this 12 by 12 square um, and you can cut them bigger or smaller if you'd like, just depending on um, what fabric you have available. Um, and the ribbon that I used for the edge of this one is all the Celebrated 360 ribbon, which is the brand that you can get at Michael's. Um, be careful to use very high quality ribbon. Oh, the ribbon that I cut were five inch pieces that I then folded in half so you can see the little loop here and then the raw edge of it is just slightly over the edge of the material because I like to make sure um, that I have a nice little bit of excess um, for some strength. So I've created a little pattern where I've got like the pink ones in the middle and then purple and green along all of the edges so that's the the order of the ribbons as I pinned them on. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do after you're happy with the spacing and the order of your colors and everything is um, because they're pinned in before we actually layer this with our crinkle material and our um, backing, we're going to just sew um, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And this isn't really supposed to be any particular seam. Um, it's just to hold these in place while you're working with other layers so that they don't get um, twisted or lost or anything like that. So I've sewn, as you can see, all the way around just to um, hold those ribbons on while we work with the rest. So if people um, are probably wondering what I'm using for the crinkle bit of the crinkle sheets, and the answer is a milk bag. So um, this one um, is the back part of one that I've already got inside one of those ones over there. So all I did was I cut um, up the seams and across the bottom and up the top. Um, and just make sure that you give it a little wipe down before you use it. But this I find is the perfect thickness um, of plastic to make like a really satisfying crinkly sound. I don't know if that's weird or not, but um, I did test it with a couple of other um, types of recycled items. Like I tried using like a normal um, shopping bag and I found that just because the plastic was thin, the crinkling sound was like a little too high pitched for me. Um, so I've been kind of really giving it good thought on what items I had lying around the house that I could use um, to be, you know, environmentally friendly and to upcycle and all that good stuff. And I think that using a milk bag is perfect. Okay, so I went around and I sewed right on top of the stitching line that I had there before so that now my front is fully attached to the milk bag. Um, and now we're going to cut the um, edges off. I really recommend leaving it bigger um, and then sewing it and trimming it down after as opposed to cutting the milk bag the exact size because I'm all about making things simple and you don't want that sliding around um, while you're trying to sew it. Um, and now that we have the edges all trimmed, 
it's going to look like this. We have our milk bag on the back, our flannel on the front, and you're going to put this right sides together with whatever you choose to use as your backing. So again, um, I'm all about cutting your backing a little bit bigger, just so that you don't have to worry about it shifting around at all when you sew. Um, and I'm just going to make sure all of our ribbons are flat and tuck straight underneath there. You can feel it with your hands. Like you can see the side is sticking up. So you just need to go under there and give them a little push so that they lie down nice and flat. And then you're going to sew in probably about three eighths from the raw edges of our fabric and our milk bag so that your seam is going to come in a little bit further than the stitching that we already had there um, from like basting the ribbons on. And when you sew this, you're going to sew all the way around all four sides and you're going to leave an opening somewhere big enough so that you can turn it when you're done. Come all the way around now and I'm almost back to the beginning where I started, just down here. So I'm going to come down a little bit further probably to this pin before I stop. Now, just like we did with the milk bag, we're going to cut off the extra minky even with the edge. Now that we've got that all trimmed off, um, we're going to do uh, the final step before we turn it, which is just to reinforce those edges one more time. Um, so I'm going to be just zigzagging, zig oh, <laughs> zigzagging um, to the right of our main stitching line. It's okay to go over top of that little basting line that we had right here because that part doesn't really matter. The actual seam of the item is the one that's further to the left. So we're just going to stay to the right of that um, and zigzag these raw edges here. So I'm going to put myself on a zigzag stitch here. Um, and as you can see when I start sewing, you just want to make sure that where your needle goes just stays to the right. And there's our zigzag stitch all the way around the edge. Um, and then one more thing that I'm going to suggest you do before you turn it is just to trim the corners on a little bit of a diagonal. You don't have to trim very much off, but this will just help the bulkiness um, after you turn it right side out. So just trim a little diagonal just like that on all of your corners over to our little hole that we left. And if you peek inside, you can see um, our top layer of fabric and the ribbons there and also the right side of the backing material so i'm going to reach my hand inside here and just go for the opposite corner of the item this goes for anything that you ever turn whether it's placemats or a table runner and you're going to reach for that far corner and grab it and then just start to push this part back and pull on this part upwards I've turned it right side out now um, and our hole is still open if i can remember where it was oh right in here that's the opening where i turned it so just make sure that once you've got it facing the right way you're going to reach inside um, and just make sure that you poke out the corners with your finger from underneath or you can also use a pin um, from the outside and um, very gently scoop it out because you want the corners to be um, as sharp as they can be um, and now we're going to just top stitch this and as we top stitch it that will take care of closing up the opening as well you can hand stitch it um, right now at this moment before um, you go to top stitch it on your machine but that's not really necessary um, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, make sure that the ribbons are pulled taut like that because you don't want them to be kind of like naturally curling in before you top stitch it obviously that's what the top stitching is for so that every time that it's washed or crinkled because it's going to be crinkled a lot you want it to be able um, to still have those nice crisp edges so you're going to make sure that that is all nice and pulled flat obviously you cannot iron it either so I recommend using some binding clips or you can pin it that's totally okay and then we're going to just top stitch this as close to the edge as you possibly can all the way around. That's it. So um, you can see my top stitching um, all the way along there nice and close to the edge um, and this is what the back looks like. Um, and yeah that's all there is to it. So I think that's just so cute. You can hear the little crinkly sound. Um, if you have any questions about anything, you can send me an email at coldthirds.workshop at gmail.com. Um, and as well, all my other social media links are always listed down below. I would absolutely love it if you sent me pictures of anything, if you end up making one. Um, that would just totally make my day. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and come back soon for some more.